Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. Stimulus checks are not the only way to get money. And thank you to all the essential workers that are working full time during this pandemic. But for people who may need help financially with literacy and credit repair, you can contact Transparent Credit Repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com. Also, you can call them at 862-250-5122. Tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you. And not only do we endorse them, but we use them, and it was great for us. So please, if you're looking for credit repair, contact TransparentCreditRepair.com. This episode, we bring you another vocalist, one that was on TV's X Factor. And if you know Simon Cowell, then you know that that brutal honesty can make or break a career. But this young lady not only survived the X Factor, but she has something to say and she stands for something as well. Let's pay attention to her podcast interview and I will come back with the rest of my commentary. Peace and blessings, everybody. This is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop. And tonight I have your favorite singer on. And if you don't know who she is, not only are you corny, you don't watch TV, and you don't notice the trend of art and culture within the music culture. Please, introduce yourself. My name is Tora Wallison. And it's a pleasure and an honor to get to talk to you. You as well. Thank you. So for everybody who does not know, you were on the X Factor show. You sung the Jackson 5, and you blew the crowd away. The judges were loving you, but what you did that night was not only introduce the world to your music, you introduced your, the world to style. Tell me, how important is it for you to own your style and not just appear in style? Well, you know, for me and, and I know for a lot of people, style is kind of a, is a brand. It's a part of your brand, a big part of it kind of who you are wrapped up in, you know, something that everybody can kind of look at and gauge in a kind of package form. That's true. And from the first time I saw you to even doing my background research, you know what you remind me of? Remember when Star Wars came out and everybody used to well, would love the dresses and how everything looked so organic yet so foreign? Mm-hmm. That's what you personify to me. You are eclectic elegance with additional talent on top of it. You are like a gumbo pot of many different styles and mixtures. How did that, how did that create your sound and music and your expression and style? Uh, I kind of think that I kind of got, kind of got my own style just through always wanting to create, um, create clothing and when mm-hmm. I was a little kid I would cut up my clothes and like tie them together and sew them on sew pants onto like a dress and all kinds of crazy stuff so over time I guess my style just kind of developed yeah because see style is something that you can't teach it's something that someone has to grow into and it's something that is already inside of them When did you realize that the passion that you had inside of you, and how did you let it come out naturally? Um, man, I mean, I guess when it first came out, I don't remember. My mom tells stories (laughs) about, um, you know, me being born, and my first words were in song. So I would, you know, listen to artists on the radio, and and my mom would play Mariah Carey all the time, and I would attempt to sing along to her, you know, before I could even talk. (laughs) So that just kind of developed, and I guess it always felt natural. It was always just something that was with me. That's beautiful. I'm a preschool teacher by trade. So when I see somebody who exudes that type of energy, I already know it from the door. Because when you have a child at three or four years old in your classroom and they're superstars already with big personalities or they have a style about them, you tell the parents to nurture them. 
How has your family aided you in developing your personality and your talent? Um, well, my mom kind of, she raised me, and she's kind of been there supporting my career, you know, from the get-go. When she first noticed that I want, that I like to sing, I was like four years old, and she put me into, um, like, performing arts programs and little youth, youth performing programs, music programs. Um, like dance and singing and acting and all that. And I would perform all around the city and eventually it went to all around the state. And then I started touring internationally when I was 13. Yeah, that's dope. So I want to ask you something from an artist's <laughs> perspective. Since you started young, when did you start <laughs> writing? The first album I wrote uh, was an EP. It was four songs, and um, I was 13. That's cool. That's really cool because I always said the best R&B, the best pop, the best country, the best hip-hop, whatever genre of music is, the best artists are those who actually write because they show their depth cognitively as well as vocally. How mm -hmm. important... How important is the cognitive part of development when it comes to music to you? Um, I think it's pretty important. I mean, you kind of have to, you know, be aware of everything that you're doing, and, you, and there's kind of a strategy to to creating and having it sound, you know, having it all flow together and sound right. Um, so, yeah, I think it's pretty important. Maybe it's fifty fifty. <laughs> fifty fifty. Wow, that's that's interesting. You know, you know why I say that's interesting because in a in a in an industry where so many people will write something for you, I think when you write it from your own heart, your own pain, your own depth, and you write your own story, that's when the best music comes out of your spirit. Do you agree? Yeah. So then, if that's the case, what is what does it feel like to? Let your spirit shine free on that stage. Say the question again. I said, so since you feel that way that the best music comes from your spirit, what does it feel like when you let that spirit flow free on the stage when you perform? Mm. Uh, it kind of feels like a crazy roller coaster. You don't know. You know, in one sense, you know what's going to happen because you have a routine that you're doing but in another sense, you, it's kind of like you don't know what turn might come and what type of a reaction you'll get from the audience. And being able to interact with the audience, I think, is a really um, amazing part of, of feeling it within your soul, connecting with other souls and having them connect with what you're doing and, you know, with your music. Yeah, see, when I usually talk to singers, I'm not really a R&B or pop type guy, you know, because I, I don't really think too many people really can sing. I think a lot of people may use vocals, but they don't really sing. You are a little different because you don't only just sing. You sing with power. How did you learn to bring your power out into your voice instead of just harmonizing the words to a, to a beat? Man, I don't even know. You know, I came, my mom would say I came out of the womb screaming my head off. Like, how did I get those uh, vocal cords inside of me? So <laughs> I guess it's just something that I was born with. Well, I will say this. Your gift is not only God-given, but it's life-changing. And I'm sure that being able to being able to take it to the stage and appear on television has taken you far many places. What are some of the – since you've been on the show, and I know you've done so much, and I'm not going to focus on that at all, I want to ask you, what ha, where has it taken you, and what has it, what has it given you the chance to see and experience? Being on the show? Well, afterwards, after the show, after the accolades. Oh. The door is open. Where did your gift take you? What did you see? Well, um, I was actually immediately found by a record label. And um, right, actually right after X Factor, I kind of went into a 
mind you, a musical coma, and I literally lost myself in my bedroom for like a month and a half, and I wrote this full, and I wrote and produced this full album called Open Heart Surgery, and it was kind of my attempt. After X Factor, I kind of realized so how how superficial um, the pop industry and the top 40 industry could be. And um, so I kind of wrote this album called Open Heart Surgery about kind of me trying to do open heart surgery on the heart of music. And um, so I produced it myself. All of the the songs and the beats were all constructed with um, instruments or, or like, objects that I make, turned into a musical instrument mm-hmm. um, and lots of lots of vocals surrounding it. Um, and I produced a show out of that album, uh, promoting that album, and it sold out. And, um, nice. yeah, it was a wonderful outcome, and I got signed immediately after the record label who was interested in me they actually they were in Miami they flew out to Arizona to come see the show and um, them and the whole family and um, you know had a big old meeting right after the show and just talked about everything and I decided to move to Miami for a year and sign with them and um, while I was signed with them I did my my records hit radio hit top 40 and um, I did a whole radio tour, and I did a song with Jim Jones and uh, Timbaland, and yeah, it was just so so much good stuff happened out there. I opened for Flow Rider, and Pink. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I don't want to go into the superficial side yet. I still want to talk about <laughs> your ascent and the appreciation for you as a person first, because that's what's more important to me—not the industry, but you, the artist. Okay. Mm-hmm. And really looking and diving deep into your um your sound and your music, I gotta say, the um album Tiger was very enjoyable. You know, um, I wanted to ask you about the cover art though. You have stripes on, and you have the beast in front of you, and you're handing them something to be something. What exactly were you trying to portray in that picture, that cover art? So it's I'm not. I'm not necessarily handing him anything. I'm kind of reaching out. Um, mm. That that cover art kind of stands for two different things. Mm-hmm. One thing being um, I'm kind of looking at myself. Um, so Tora means tiger in Japanese, um, and so my whole brand is kind of I'm branded around the tiger. Um, mm-hmm. I do a lot of activism for uh, you know against poaching for tigers and for animals going extinct. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of just, it was a way of, of, I was kind of looking at not only, not only portraying the tiger itself, um, but also kind of looking in the mirror in a sense, mm. looking at my vulnerable side. Mm. So you were the vulnerable side or the tiger was vulnerable? What do you think? <laughs> I think it's both. Because when you listen to the music that's on the actual project, you speak to both dichotomies of the picture, Guns and Roses, whether it's acoustic, which means it's yourself, or it could be with the instruments, which could be the beast, which is the industry. Right. Um, tattoo tattoo your of, name. I mean, it speaks for itself. Right, yeah. It's kind of like a, the relationship between, you know, relationship with myself, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm reaching out. And this tiger is cautiously approaching me, so we're both kind of in fear of each other. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Isn't that what life is about, though? Because you got to take the chances and you got to face your fears, only to realize that your fears come from what's inside of you, and you have to conquer them. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You have to accept who you are as a person and be be always always strive to be better. See, that's what I like about you as a person because you've shown that in many different aspects of your career. Not to stray away from the album, though, what I like about you conquering that fear is even in the songs like Confidential, you're like, you didn't even think I would do this, did you? Or did you flip a whole other style <laughs> that's not like everything else. Am I correct? Yeah, I got a How lot fun. of How um, fun. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. No, no, you got a lot of what? 
Oh, I got a lot of uh, hate for doing that song. <laughs> you got hated for doing Confidential? Yeah. Do tell, please. Tell me the story behind that one. That's interesting. Some people were like, oh, you think you're a rapper now? And then some people were like, you have to choose a genre. You can't be doing all this. You're all over the place. Um, I had some labels that were like, we wouldn't know what to do with you type of thing. And that's what made it so hot to me because it showed that you don't want to be put in a box. <laughs> I, I like Me personally, I like the song. I'm going to tell you why. Because when you hear somebody do something over and over and over again, they're one-dimensional and then you can't connect to them. Me hearing mm -hmm. Confidential and then hearing Poor Little Fool and then hearing Guns N' Roses, I was like, oh, she got range and she got depth. This girl is dope. So you stood out to me. And, I mean, congratulations you. on... Oh, you're very welcome. But congratulations on proving them foolish, and you are you a real artist. I, I I really respect you for that. Thank you. I now, appreciate that. Hey man, you know I just tell the truth. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, but um, more than that, more than that project though, you have other music that came out sparingly. Why did you want to fall back a little bit and not continue to just do album after album after album like everybody else? Um, you know, I went through a lot of crazy stuff after, mm -hmm. um, you know, after I, the contract ended with the label, the label owner, he, you know, got, had some health issues and he shut the label down and, um, you know, ended up focusing on family after that. And, um, so, you know, I, I did a lot of different things. I, I moved to LA right after that and, and tried to work on this album that was kind of like a, about my life mm -hmm. and about what I went through and how I overcame the trauma. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm still trying to do that album. I got really badly screwed over um, yeah. trying to do that. Yeah, I did a bunch of songs and everything, and then all of a sudden he was like, the engineer was like, well, if you want all your files, you have to give me so-and-so amount of money. And I was oh. like, I can't even do that. Extortion, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, Welcome to the industry. Yeah, exactly. And so that's so, the jading you know, part. I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I ended up having to go to back to Arizona for a little while. I worked full time as a chef for a while and like kind of saved my money, saved it all up so I can go back to LA. Um, and then I went back to LA to just to get screwed over again. So. I, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to hustle and, and get my game back up and, you know, get take every opportunity that, you know, came to me that was verified. So, part of what I tell people who are independents is that you have to own your own and not look for the handout. Go to someone as a partner don't go to them begging and be owned. Since you, yeah. since you broke away and really took charge of your own career and standing on your own principles and not those that somebody tries to create for you, how did that make you a better artist or a better, yeah, a better artist overall since the beginning when you first started? Well, you know, I, I was really, shaped as a, as a human, as, as myself, knowing exactly who I was, what I wanted in my life, and, you know, the reason I was doing this, the reason why I was doing, the whole reason behind why I was doing music in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that was, you know, right after X Factor, and I had never been with a label who had given me so much um, creative value, and, you know, I just ran, I ran with it, you know, and um, so I wanted to work with this person. They, they, you know, reached out to try to get me to work with this person. If I wanted to do a song that was like this, I could do a song that was like that, you know. If I wanted to rap, that was when I wrote the Confidential. That was when I wrote the Tiger album was mm -hmm. when I was signed to this label. So, you know, they kind of, they were like, I loved what you did with the show. Now show us what else you can do. So mm -hmm. it was that really 
really showed me, helped me know exactly who I was as a person. I mean, X Factor in itself helped me realize a lot of things about who I was as an artist and who I wanted to be as well. Um, I turned down a huge contract. You know, I could have gone further. I could have done a lot more, but they knew I wasn't going to sign. So um, that was a really big decision on my part, a life-changing possibly, you know, a negative decision on my part because, you know, it could have, it could have, uh, signing that contract could have brought me a lot more exposure. And then through that exposure, I could have done a lot more with, you know, my organization that I'm trying to build. But, you know, in a sense, our stories work out on their own and they all, I feel like there's a, every story is kind of written and, there's a purpose for everything. So I'm just waiting for that to unfold. We're going to talk about the organization in a second. Um, Wow, you gave me so much in that one little thing because (laughs) a lot lot of people always give you the cup, but you always don't want to drink from it because sometimes you can get blessed and sometimes you can get inebriated inebriated and taken advantage of. And, And from what I've seen, of your career, which is still rising, not leveling, is that you branched yourself off, whether you're in a band or you're in a folk duo. Please explain about Talk about that to me because that's so interesting. Well, yeah, the folk duo was um, something that I was kind of working on with this person that I was dating. and. Okay. Um, Something really horrible happened with that, and so, you know, we are no longer together. I still want to pursue a project like that, but, um, you know, now I just have an empty slot. (laughs) Okay, I got you. But what about the band? The Queen Macaulay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that band is, um, you know, we're still working on it. I perform with the pianist um, often, and Mm -hmm. we actually, um, we have been doing this quarantine concert tour that I just started, and um, yeah, so that has a bunch of little tour dates coming up. It's like a little virtual Instagram Live thing that we're doing, so that'll be fun. And Macaulay stands for Tigress as well, right? Well, Queen Macaulay was actually the name of um, one of the uh, the female tigers in India in a conservation. She actually died in 2013, but wow. she was held in a conservation, um, and she was actually one of the most photographed tigers in the whole world. Hmm. See, that's interesting to me, and this is why I'm going to tell you. The name Queen Macaulay is very, very special, especially um, especially going to the love cover by Nat King Cole. Sound familiar? Yeah, actually. Yes, and I mean, when you think about love and that name comes to mind, you bring and invoke a lot of life and a lot of spirituality within that because tigers are seen as very very spiritual animals and music is very spiritual because it's a gift that's given from God through creation so I applaud you for always being forward thinking even in your expression what did that song that cover that you did by Matt King Cole what did that open you up to um you know it opened me up to a, a whole another world of music you know I Mm -hmm. kind of when I covered that song I kind of um mixed the the jazz version with an R&B version so um kind of opened me up to another world of of genres as well yes I love that because that's what I mean when I say a true artist you are an artist of life not just of music Understanding that and doing some digging on you because I love to learn about people, 
you are a nature. You're, you're a nature type person. How did your love of nature come about, and, and, and how do you how do you keep it alive in your in your life um, every day? Um. Well, I started my love of nature started when I was very young. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I was growing, learning to grow plants in elementary school and in kindergarten. Um, so, you know, that developed and eventually, you know, by the time I was 15, I had a little organic farm in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of have a little, little organic farm everywhere that I, that I live. (laughs) Well, I like to call you, I want to call you Dr. Torah, if you don't mind. (laughs) Cause, cause as a, as a doctor, you are taking the responsibility of health welfare and nurturing within your your practice with your music you do the same thing you heal the mind you heal the body you heal emotions that makes you a doctor of spirit but even when you make your plants and you plant your food and you cook your food or, or you or you prepare meals for yourself or your family you're a nutritional doctor which means you're a doctor of the body between music and even being a, 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 a chef or farmer, how important is it to give people life within your creation rather than to just give them something that can be entertaining? Well, I feel like, you know, part of the reason I share my story is to kind of reach out to those who have been through similar or the same types of you know things so I'm hoping I hope to create this outlet for people to kind of get away and and listen to something that might be uplifting and motivational you are amazing let me just tell you that and the reason why I'm saying that is because your life outside of your music is just as important to those who just take music, music, we want to sing, we want to make money, you want to do this. Your life outside of your music is just as important, if not as value, just as the music itself. And finding these things out about you is what's really made you, like, amazing to me. I see that you've trained dogs, horses, you're doing race cars and stuff. I mean, you dance, you sing, you cook. But then you also started an organization, Rev Motion. Tell me about your organization. Well, Rev Motion, um, it's divided up into several different divisions. There's a conservation division, which is the con- uh, conserving of wildlife and endangered species. And mm-hmm. there is um, the farming division, where uh, I would eventually want to have farms in every state that provide um, organic, and they would be underground, um, UV-run, and self-sustained. And um, there's also the kind of, I'm not really sure what what to call it, because it's not really an orphanage, but it's kind of like a youth development program where um, it's, it's, maybe kind of like a boarding school for okay. youth that get stuck in foster care. Um, I eventually want to fight the laws for foster care and make it harder for people to foster, make it kind of not harder, but make the um, admission process uh, more difficult and more uh, more detailed. Because I know a lot of people just foster to get that paycheck and then they treat the kids like crap, you know. So. Yes, I know. Yeah. So uh, there's also another division um, for youth, which helps them um, be, uh, helps them um, utilize a creative outlook. So there's going to be a music development program and business program and lots of other programs like that. Like and then you. there's the, res- the rescue series, which is um, working with rescue organizations that are foster-based and building mm-hmm. them shelters for their fosters. 
So that's cool. I want you to keep Heritage Hip Hop up with your Rev Motion because that's very important because I'm going to have some fun with you on the rapid fire questions. I want to save some of my great deeper questions for later because mm -hmm. I want people to get a little bit of your depth to know that you're more than somebody who sings on the stage. You're somebody who is goes beyond the talent. You, you you really go into life and you respect it. And I wanted to honor you for that rather than talk to you about the same thing. Like, what about, what is it like singing this? And what about this song? I could ask you about some of your great songs that some people may not have heard, like Quarantine, The Quarantine and Breath. You did your thing. Those are excellent songs. Hold on, please. I'm sorry, give me one second, okay? Oh, sure. All right. Okay, hello? Hi. All right, this is our pickup. Okay, here we go. Now, I, I had an interruption, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so picking up. So, yeah, we could talk about breath. We could talk about the quarantine, which are great songs that you've made. But the depth of your personality is what is going to make the audience and your audience grow and appreciate you because we hear so much about people who have talents who turn who turn out to be complete jackasses, part of my language. And then you have people who have the talent, but they want to conserve life rather than give a life or a facade of falsehoods than um, and, 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 and give the world a lie that doesn't really matter. What's more important to you, being able to sing or being able to be uh, um, a person who runs charity and conservational type of business? Um, you know, that's very hard. It's I think both hold uh, significant importance in their own way. Mm -hmm. I do tell. Well, I mean, you know, singing is a is a way that I can not only, um, yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's a kind of a therapeutic thing for me, and mm -hmm. um, also a way that I can reach out to people on a level that you know isn't usually on a reach like that people can usually reach. So, um, but it's also you know, it's also for myself. So it's for others, but it's also for myself. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the I mean, the organization and everything is is kind of the whole reason why I'm publicly making a brand out of the music thing because um, you know with with greater influence, I can, you know, get this organization actually running. And that's so dope. Like I said, man, that's that's, that's a beautiful thing. You know what bothers me, though? I'm going to be real with you. A lot of people don't understand that people who are in the arts are generally people that when they see you, oh, you're just supposed to sing. When somebody plays basketball, oh, you're just supposed to dribble a ball. When you're on stage or you're an actor, you're that character. You're not you. And one thing they sleep on or don't give credence to is that artists and people who create are very learned, very intelligent. They're very smart. You are a student not only of the game, but you're also a student in the classroom. Tell me about some of your classroom uh, opportunities that came and where you've taken those. Classroom, like, um, in school? I mean, the Berkeley School of Music? You were accepted to that? Oh, yeah, that I applied and was accepted. I also, at the same time, applied for the San Francisco Art Institute, who happened to offer me a bigger scholarship. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. um, had to take the, you know, the more opportune situation. Well, of course. That's called weighing your options. Children do that all the time when they play sports. Who's going to send me to school for free, and who's going to give me free school and books? <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what right. it is. 
But that's what I mean when I say the depth of the personality because some people believe that when you're an artist, all you do is sing and nothing else. Some people think you wake up, you, you brush your teeth, you wash your face, you wash your body, you go to the studio, then you go or you get high, you go sing somewhere and go home. Where <laughs> actually, well, actually a lot of artists are entrepreneurs, business owners. They're people with degrees, whether associates, bachelors, masters, or PhD. I know, I know a rapper that has a PhD. And when he talks, people expect him to be sound like he's fresh off the corner doing something crazy. When when he talks, his perspective and his conversation is so strong that he lures people into the conversation. Hold on, please. Hello? Hello? That was my grandson banging on the door. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to edit all this out, so we're, we're, we're all right. Um, and we're going to pick up right here. Being that you, you basically defy, I'm sorry, does not define. Being that you basically defy the belief of an artist just being somebody who does and not someone who's accomplished, what is the biggest victory you have over proving your non-believers wrong? What is the bi biggest victory I've had? Over proving people wrong about yourself, yes. Hmm. Oh, man, that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, I guess X Factor was a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a big one, um, mainly because, you know, I had actually done American Idol in 2005. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I met Simon Cowell, and he did not like me back then. Um, I did make it to Hollywood, because the other judges did, but he did not. And um, so it was kind of like I won him over, in a sense, because X Factor, he was just madly in love, you know? And so it was kind of like I won him over. Is he really that important to win over, though? I've always been I've always, I've been jaded about them shows because I don't I don't see the purpose. I I don't I don't get him. I don't. I mean, I get the judges because they're celebrities. Oh, we gotta make it for TV. Ooh, I, I get that, and I'm not just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play them down or downplay them because they are people who are accomplished in the industry. But him, why? I don't understand. Um, for me, it's. Two major things with him. Uh, one okay. is his um, insane honesty. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there's nobody like him. There's nobody that honest. There's nobody that real. Um, I've always said, you know, if if he likes you, then you know you got a real shot. And, okay. Um, also, it was important because. When I first met him, he didn't like me, and I was kind of like, uh, "I'm gonna make him like me," mm -hmm. without changing mm -hmm. who I am. Like he's gonna like who I am, you know? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I I've never. That's the one thing about me that's a little different. I'm kind of cut, I mean, cut from the same cloth, like, you know. Credibility, like with with his name on my resume, I could get any singing job anywhere, anytime, always. You oh, know. Oh, okay. Well, that that's always a, a a plus, and like I said, not to downplay him because that would be stupid, and also it would uh, and it's not it's not it's not it's not no it's not respectful. I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody. I just I, I'm kind of cut from the same cloth. Like I tell people, I don't have to like your music. I'll respect you as a person though. But if you could get to my playlist, 
and you've done something because my ear for music is a little different. But like I said, he's industry standard, so I know his word is very meaningful when it comes to those circles. So before we close out our interview and have some fun with our rapid fire questions, please, can you plug your social media and your websites and everything that you that you want people to know about yourself? Yes. Uh, my social media, it's all at Tora Wallison. My YouTube is um, It's Me, Tora. I actually just released a new music video, so head over and watch that. The single will be released in about a week. And, um, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, well... <laughs> Before we go into our rapid-fire questions, I would like to tell you that Heritage Hip Hop was not made to just talk about beats and music. As you see, we talk about the depth of the artist to show the world that you are a meaningful person, not just someone who can harmonize over rhythm. So for everybody out there that likes Miss Tora, Dr. Tora, as I like to call her, Go check her music out. It's available on all streaming services. But if you really like her and you like her music, we ask that you do not just stream her music. Take a dollar out your pocket or out your wallet or out your cash app or whatever and make sure you buy a single. And if you like her that much more, buy an album. For the money that you, the money that you invest in her music, the money you invest in her sound, you invest in her movement and, and her goals as a person, whether it's to conserve animals, whether it's to make music, whether it's to grow food, or whether it's to feed the nation something physical, mental, or emotional, please invest in this great person who makes great music. Mm-hmm. With, with that being said, you ready to have some fun? Yeah. All right, well, the rapid fire questions are not yes, no questions. I don't ask you questions like what's your favorite color or who you find sexy because I don't really care. It's all about you, and it's all about your outlook on life. So here we go. Question number one. What song defines your life? And it's has to, it cannot be a song that comes from you. The Blood of Poochie Lane by Michael and Jeff Dana. And why that song? Um, because it, it's actually an instrumental song. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's got the sounds of Ireland, so it's like an Irish uh, type sounding song. Um, mm-hmm. The the climax of the song is is so epic and and emotional, and there's so many different instruments and so many different parts, and but in, in, somehow they all collide perfectly in sync with each other, and um, you know harm, harmonically with each other. And um, so it's kind of like, I guess, me wrapped up in to one song. <laughs> okay. No, I respect that. That's you were the first person that gave us a, um an instrumental. Like <laughs> that's mm-hmm. actually dope. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question: Being a part of a movement. Is something that makes a person learn more about themselves than being an individual. Since learn, since joining Phi Theta Kappa, what have you learned about yourself? Um, oh, you're talking about the Honor Society. Yeah. Um, well, I, gosh, when they first invited me to join, I think that was in... I want to say that was in, like, 2012 or something, somewhere around there. It might have been, it might have been a little bit later, but I was inducted in 2015, and um, I kind of, I was kind of impressed with myself um, in a way for being able to maintain such a high GPA and, and, just realized that, you know, I should give myself more credit. I deserve more credit than I give my myself. Okay. That's dope. Like I said, showing the world your depth. Dr. Tora herself, the singer, the activist, the conservationalist, she's the embodiment of girl power, woman's excellence, and queenship. 
when we look at women, we look at them as artistic forms of God's expression. Some of, some people even see women as superheroes. If you could see yourself as a superhero, what superhero would you embody and why? Um, I would probably embody Storm. That's because, a very interesting one. Why? Yeah. Well, she's fueled with emotion and and power and and you know self doubt. You know, at first, so mm-hmm. I feel like I can relate to her a lot. Not only her past, but her current self. Or I should I don't know current self, but you know her older self, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> her older self, okay. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, all right. So your emotions make you the great person that you are, you feel? I feel like they, yes, in a sense, yes, actually. Okay. The passion, the passion. You're very passionate. I agree. Since you're in the Tigers, i got to ask you something mainstream and crazy. Tiger King was big on Netflix. Did that piss you off? Oh, that show made me feel a lot of different emotions. <laughs> um, I figure. Yeah, I I, uh, I still sometimes, I haven't watched the whole thing. I have to take it in part because I do have a very, there are, you know, just a handful of things that get me, like, revved up and emotional and, you know, in a sense. Mm-hmm. To where I feel I might not be controllable, mm-hmm. not even myself. So, you know, I have to take certain things like that in small parts. <laughs> no, I get it. As I'm slowly watching that show, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess a lot of, I don't know. I don't know. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the reason why I asked you that question. It's not about the show, and it's really not about the tiger. It's about the media and perception. That story is disgusting to me personally for many reasons. But the main thing that makes it even worse to me is that the controversy of the situation led to a movie that could possibly be made. It led to action figures being made, statues, whatever. And it led to people championing a movement that's based on ownership. And it kind of reminded me of the music industry where someone would take a person and make them a character and not respect them as a person. And understanding what I just said, how did you make sure you did not lose yourself and you stayed true to you by by taking a look into the industry? Mm. You know, that's a very, very complicated question. Mm-hmm. In a way, I could say that I have lost myself in the past. Um, mm. There were, you know, even when I was younger, um, like in my teens, I didn't even know who I even wanted to be, much less who I was. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess going through all the things that I went through in the industry and losing myself was a part of what made me find myself and know exactly who I was and what I wanted. You kind of have to lose yourself a little bit in order to find yourself. Yeah, I agree. That's called experience. Mm-hmm. And that's what life is all about. Experience, the experience is the best teacher. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got to put your hand on the stove to know what hot is, so you don't do it again. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I, and I understand yeah. that. I definitely understand that. Let's continue with your interview. And, and music cooperation is something that is very important when you build your uh, reputation and you build your connections. Some people connect and make music. In your perfect track, your perfect song, who would you collab with and who would do your music? Hmm. 
Well, I have a couple. Well, if I'm coming straight from the heart and straight from my past and how I grew up, I would choose Mariah Carey. I would do my song with her. Mm -hmm. And um, Timberland would do the music. Nice. Um, but if I'm coming from like a like someone that I want to write a song with, because I know Mariah Carey doesn't doesn't write that much. Um, but if I actually wanted to kind of sing someone else's song in a sense, um, I would choose Sia. I think she's a phenomenal nice. songwriter, and I love her voice and her essence. Nice. That's what's up. That's a beautiful thing. See, I, I have think people. Hans Zimmer. I'd have Hans Zimmer do the music if Sia, if me and Sia did it. Hans Zimmer. Wow. Okay. That's 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 very different. Okay. I'm on feeling that. All right. Um, I have people who listen to your music who would love to work with you, actually, and that's going to be a very interesting. That would that would be a very interesting collab to see, because they feel like when you sing, your power brings out your vocals, not your vocals bringing out the song. So, well, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing about hearing your music, you know. Mm -hmm. Here's another. Here's another question. Art is not one dimensional. It goes anywhere it wants to go. Besides music, would you want to see yourself on the big, big or little screen again, or in a starring role? And what, or what role would you play? I would definitely uh, be interested in doing a a big, big screen picture um, in a starring role. I, I'm not sure who I'd play. I would. Uh, That's a hard one. <laughs> that is a hard one. Um, yeah. Because all the answers <laughs> I would have had, they already redid those movies. Like what? Like what movies? Like the Harley Quinn. I would have been a little brown Harley Quinn. Like Harley <laughs> Quinn? Okay. You, you like DC Comics? I could play crazy. You know, you like oh you like the you like the the person who can just get loose. I like I like the role, yeah. Oh. But okay. Then again, I could play someone like Storm if they did a movie on her. They haven't done a Storm movie, huh? Not yet, but I doubt they will anyway. But she'll be back, you know, Marvel and um Disney. So. Yeah. That, I, I'm very interested in how you said that because if you like to cut loose like Harley Quinn, you, do you know who Punchline is? Uh, it sounds familiar. I'm not sure. So Punchline is the Joker's new girlfriend, and she actually fights against Harley Quinn. <laughs> oh. And she hasn't really come out in the books too much, but she was the most demanded cosplay character within the past, well, before COVID started, like two months before COVID started. And she didn't even come out in print form as a book, but her character was so big when it debuted, it was, like, amazing. It was everywhere. So... Cutting loose, that could be interesting if you like to cut loose, you know? That's, 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 that's deep. And I always figured you as a Catwoman type, Wonder Woman type person, but okay. I got you. <laughs> My next question for you is this. What speaks better as an artist? Creating music that is loving and happy or creating music out of experience and out of pain? Well, you know, sometimes the music out of experience and pain can also create happy music. Because sometimes mm -hmm. you're like, you just need that motivational song and you're like, you know, don't give up type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it's kind of a little bit of both. I, you know, a little bit of pain and experience and trauma is needed to, to create any sort of music that has you know, feeling in depth and, and real perception, you know. So then my question that comes off of that is this. Why is everybody looking for happiness but so focused on the pain that took it away? Well, why are we human, you know? <laughs> right, go in. I mean, go ahead. 
That's a good question you know, to answer a question with, but you know, what do you mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just like what came first, the chicken or the egg. Mm. Kind of like saying that. I have my own answer, and I keep it to myself. <laughs> 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 but I get you. Okay. We have two more questions. We're here with, we're here with the fabulous singer Tara. You may know her from the X Factor. I know her for being great and being a great person as a whole, and we hope you're enjoying this interview. Second to last question of this interview is this. We always define ourselves by what we have versus what we have not. What is it that you have that makes you forget your have-nots? That's a hard one. Mm hmm But before you answer, to everybody out there listening to Heritage Hip Hop, all our interviews are made specifically for these artists, so that's why you hear these questions that are not being asked to any other artists. So if you have not had this experience, please follow Heritage Hip Hop on all social media and our own website, heritagehiphop.com. I give you time to think. You good now? I just want to give you a buffer. I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to think, <laughs> well, man, I guess my, oh, I'm not going to say that. That's, that's funny. That's, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> say it. Let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess having... Having like keeping myself busy, having having work and having, mm-hmm. um, you know, my career. I'm trying to keep up with right now. It makes me forget the fact that I don't have a pet. Okay, you want a pet? Because my dad. Um. Well, yeah. Well, I have, I have two pets that are with my mom. My mom, like, she, they're hers now, pretty much. Okay. But I'm, you know, I'm in the Bay Area with my dad, and he's allergic to animals, so. So before we end this question, shout out to mom. You're a great mom. Shout out to dad. Family's always important. That's a half that makes you forget you have not, so shout out to family. <laughs> we'll yeah. put that out there. Let's put that out there so, you know, your family don't blame. Why don't you say us? We're going to say you now. <laughs> shout out to family. <laughs> oh, man. Here's the final question, and once again, thank you for coming on Heritage Hip Hop. Let's 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 end this out with a bang. This is the most important question I ask everybody on Heritage Hip Hop because on, on the first interview, and you're always welcome to come back if there's any anything you want to talk about, whether it's your music, your foundation, etc. Feel free. Okay, the door is always open. Um, the most important question I ask is this one: One day you're not going to live anymore. Unfortunately, our lives are very temporal. And whether somebody sees a rerun of X Factor or they happen across your, your foundation that's been going on for three, four, five generations now, or somebody's like, you know, they just, just researches music and somebody brings you up and they listen to you and they go, oh, she is dope, and they go back and listen to your music. The most important question I ask is, what is the legacy that you left on the world that made it better since you did music and more? to motivate people to also strive to make the world better. Ladies and gentlemen, your job is to be better every day. And no matter what you go through, not only will the most high should give you the opportunity to be better, but you can always choose to be better. You don't always encounter positives. You're going to encounter some negatives, and you have the opportunity to make yourself better and able to Beat the negatives and turn everything into a positive. If life gives you lemons, you hustle lemonade, make some money, and help somebody else. With that being said, Ms. Tara, thank you for letting us interview you. We are humble and very appreciative. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. For everybody out there, we say peace, and we out. Thank you for once again listening to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. A shout out to the X Factor and Tora Wolosian, who not only sings, but she gives life through what she does. Being an activist who cares for animals, growing food, chefing, cooking, but making sure she also cooks in that studio and gives you 
good music. He has a new song out now called IDAF, and I think you know what that means, but you can check it out on all platforms and make sure you purchase the music. Streaming is nice, but by spending money, you invest in the artist and make sure you get more music to come. This episode of Heritage Hip Hop was brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair. The credit repair geniuses, superheroes, the financial literacy superheroes of the game. If you're looking to do more in your life and not live stimulus check to stimulus check and your money is shortened by the pandemic, please contact Transparent Credit Repair at 862-250-5122 or visit them online at transparentcreditrepair.com. Tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you and you may get something special. For everybody that tuned in, thank you for listening to this podcast interview. We are Heritage Hip Hop. We are at www.heritagehiphop.com. We are Heritage Hip Hop on all social medias. If you would like to donate and support, we have a cash app, which is dollar sign K-A-R-E-V-Y-A-H. That's dollar sign Karevia. We have a donate button on our website. And if you'd like to buy some apparel, some t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, whatever to look good and support the movement, you could go to www.storefrontier.com forward slash heritage hip hop. We'd like to give a shout out to our affiliates and partners. We have Fatty's Place. If you're looking for a virtual assistant, they will help you with your social media campaigns and your look. You can contact them on Instagram at F-A-D-D-Y-S-P-L-A-C-E. We have a marketing promotion and placement genius who is is an MC who went into the corporate world and has been very productive. His name is Firejaws. You can hit him at F-I-R-E-J-A-W-S on Instagram as he teaches you not only to promote yourself, but know where to put your promotion to be successful. We had Diamonds Entertainment LLC, D-I-E-M-E-N-Z Entertainment LLC, which is another side of hip hop, which talks about fashion, sports, and other things that men get into. Shout out to the ladies who like sports and fashion as well. We also have another show affiliated with Heritage Hip Hop, which is The Big A Show. The host Big A, and me, I'm the co-host, and that's a wild show. Season 2 will be coming soon. If you want to see Season 1, you can go to a-H-D-A-Y-A-R on YouTube and check out The Big A Show. All videos and all past appearances on Heritage Hip Hop was on our YouTube page, so feel free to go to our YouTube page and indulge in great interviews with great MCs from <laughs> across, the, across the nation. And the podcast is across the world. So we there and we hope you'll be there too. Thank you to everybody who supports us, listens to us. And as we grow and get better, we represent you, the hip hop nation, and we want to make you proud. So in the most high's name, we thank you. We say peace. And we out.